Well, 2019 was a remarkable year for NCATS, and, and I want to start by thanking all of you, our collaborators, our partners, uh, scientists, physicians, patients, um, regulators, all of you who work so closely with us uh, to make uh, this, this common vision that we have of translational science uh, uh, come true uh, in some really meaningful ways in, in 2019. Um, and I'll just share a couple of highlights with you. The, uh, you know, we, we've, over the last few years, started this new field of translational science. And, and many people have asked us, well, what, you know, what is a translational scientist anyway? And I, what, what are the characteristics? If I want to be a translational scientist, what, what do I have to know? How do, what kind of, what, what kind of a, how do I know if I'm the kind of person who would want to be a translational scientist? So we published a paper uh, describing those essential characteristics of a translational scientist. And we published a video on our website about uh, what it's like to be a translational scientist and why we're so excited about the field. So I hope you'll take a look at those if you haven't so far. On the, the preclinical side, you know, we do a lot of work to try to, uh, try to bring potential new targets uh, to the point where they, they have an intervention that could be tested in people. And, and just one example that I find remarkable and a remarkable um, validation of the NCATS uh, collaborative model, team-based model, is the fact that in this one year alone, we had eight investigational drug, new drug applications applied to and then cleared by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, and, and, and for that record to happen in a relatively small program of the size that we have is, is unheard of uh, in, in our field. And, and it indicates uh, two things, really, that, that the NCAS model really does work. The teamwork really does work. This collaborative model, which is so different from how, how science tends to be done, uh, really does work. Uh, and secondly, that each one of these INDs represents a potential new treatment for patients with diseases th that, are, that are currently untreatable. And, and, and that's, what, that's what NCAS is all about. Uh, and the, on the rare disease clinical side, uh, we have the launch of the fourth iteration of the Rare Disease Clinical Research Network. Uh, it's, um, this is something that is a collaboration not only uh, among these collabor within these uh, consortia, but also with, uh, with, uh, with upwards of 10 of our uh, institute and center partners here at the NIH. Uh, and that includes six new consortia, six new kinds of diseases that we've never been able to study before, uh, and their patient representatives now part of, of, this, of this program. So, so all kinds of new, uh, 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 new advances will be possible. On, on the clinical side, uh, lots of remarkable things happened um, uh, in the Clinical and Translational Science Award program. Perhaps one of the most exciting uh, things is the launch of something called the Effectiveness Research Network, uh, the ERN, uh, part of the, uh, the NIH program to uh, address the pain and opioid crisis. And, and the reason it's so significant for us is that, that this ERN is run through the CTSA program, and, it's, and it was a real vote of confidence on the part of NIH that, that, that in such an urgent public health uh, uh, crisis as this, um, NIH would turn to NCATS and the Trial Innovation Network and the CTSA program uh, to, to take these innovations that we've developed over the last few years in the Trial Innovation Network and, and bring them to bear on this, on, this, on this urgent public health crisis of our time. Uh, and, and so that, again, thank you for, for all of that to, to make that possible. I'll just give you one last uh, personal note um, that was a high, high point for me. Um, I got to, in May, uh, go down to a launch of, uh, of our, uh, four of our tissue chip platforms uh, on a SpaceX rocket to the, uh, to the International Space Station. And uh, for an old uh, Apollo nerd like me, on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, um, uh, that was uh, an absolutely wonderful event. It was not only a wonderful event for me uh, personally, it was also a wonderful event for translational science. Uh, and the reason is that, that we took this tissue chip platform that we had developed for terrestrial purposes and realized if we expand this team even broader to include astronauts and, and space technologists, that, that we can expand the use of, of this platform to give us insights into aging of the immune system, to bone loss, to muscle loss, 
urgent problems here on Earth that are very hard to study, but, they, but we can study them on the International Space Station. But we could only do that with new partners. And, and so we're already getting insights from those experiments, which, which, I, which are literally out of this world. So as we bring this year to a close, I, I want to thank you again for your partnership in making this happen. Um, and, and, and wish you a, a restful uh, and well-deserved uh, break with your families and friends over the holidays. Uh, and, and I look forward to coming back to, with you in 2020 uh, to, to continue to change the world, to bring the promise of science, translational science, uh, to, to patients in need.